Ladies and gentlemen, I've been talking about this for a long time. President Trump is going to continue to transform the Republican Party. McCarthy, Trump, hold very good and cordial meeting focused on 2022 midterms. All the never-Trump Republicans are going to be purged from the Republican Party. There will never again be a Jeb Bush or Mitt Romney or Ben Sass or Paul Ryan type of nominee. It ain't going to happen. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. I've been saying this for a long, long time. That's a very good thing. There are certain populist policies or there are certain things that took place during President Trump's administration that the left, that, li well, I should say liberals don't care about never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts, but reversing U.S. foreign policy and forging peace deals, that's a good thing. People should want that. President Trump presided over the Abraham Accords. He was the first president to step foot in North Korea to begin detente between North and South Korea. President Moon Jae-in of South Korea stated that Trump deserved the Nobel Peace Prize. That's a good, these are good things. You can't expect Democrats to admit these are good things, or liberals, or many, I should say many liberals, or many Democrats, or many never-Trump Republicans. They simply don't care about these profound, paradigm-changing foreign policy accomplishments. They simply don't care. Um, cosmetic and public relations stunts in the terms of executive orders pertaining to climate change. So there's no like Green New Deal legislation. That was all a racket. Okay, It was a resolution, which I called out, which was hilarious. They're all about public relations. And he'll sign a couple executive orders here and there. Biden, the left is like yawning and completely bored with his presidency already. What Republicans have learned is the following. The only thing keeping the GOP afloat is President Trump. President Trump reversed U.S. foreign policy. He ripped apart the Trans-Pacific Partnership engaged in tariffs. This is not like... De President Obama also imposed tariffs, just not as many as President Trump. So again, th it, these are policies that aren't the, like horrendous policies. These are good policies. Which, I mean, the tariffs are what the steel companies wanted and other companies wanted. Okay, um, You can look, renegotiating NAFTA into the USMCA was a very good thing. That is something that a traditional Republican wouldn't do. That's why President Trump ha holds the key to the future, the keys to the future of the Republican Party. To the dismay and the horror of Democrats. See, you look now at the press conferences. Oh my God, the White House press corps is silent. No more petulant, malicious, angry, disgruntled activists posing as journalists. Just simply... Uh, quiet and, um, I mean, uh, the press, uh, press secretary today stated when she was asked about GameStop and, um, the hedge fund that went under, she said, well, we have the first female, uh, treasury secretary. Isn't that fantastic? It had nothing to do. This is a typical Democratic Party doublespeak. It had nothing to do with the question and they were fine with it. They were fine with it. Any lie, any uh, any time they try to obfuscate or circumvent the question, they'll be allowed to do so because the media, well, 58% of Americans when surveyed, 58% either don't trust media or think that media was trying to simply push a political viewpoint, which is what... They, they did for four years. President Trump, many of President Trump's policies were very good. Many of the things he did were very good things. Positive, like, you know, like the right decision. So he allocated more funding to historically black colleges and universities. The link is below in the, pinned com in the description if you don't believe that. And he made the funding permanent. He signed the First Step Act. So he was at the forefront of prison reform legislation. Okay, Democrats view Trump in one way. They view him as directly responsible for every horrible thing that took place in his presidency, and, pre and they've absolved guilt 
uh, from President Obama and Biden and Clinton for the tragedy and in Libya and turning that country into a failed state with a horrendous NATO intervention. Democrats can do no wrong. They can do no wrong, and and Trump could do no, nothing right, according to media and the Democratic Party. But if you watch this channel, and I use uh, reputable sources, you can see that he's achieved a great deal. McCar- uh, Kevin McCarthy meeting with Trump is a very interesting thing. It's only confirmation of what I've been saying for a long, long time. Former President Donald Trump met House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy on Thursday for what was later described as a very good and cordial meeting, in which the top agenda item was taking back the House of Representatives in 2022. What do you think is going to happen when you have Trump Republicans taking back the House of Representatives? Endless investigations, and you'll probably find things. Now, again... You didn't find, when people say, well, all the investigations won't lead to anything, there's a Hunter Biden probe right now, a special, uh, sorry, 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 not a special counsel. The special counsel is the Durham probe turned into a special counsel, just like Mueller. So legally, Comey, Strzok, McCabe, Clapper, Brennan, they're all within the investigation that's currently taking place. They're all being investigated by the Durham probe. You have that special counsel. You... Once you have a Republican Party that actually defends a Republican president, God forbid they actually defend Trump, the Republicans will be pretty much unstoppable. You need every... Okay, Democrats don't run on policies. They run on peer pressure. If you don't have Jimmy Kimmel every single night, if you don't have 92% negative media coverage of Trump, according to one study, if you don't have corrupt intelligence officials, if you don't have... Every single spin from the Washington Post, the New York Times, MSNBC, CNN, all leveled against Trump. And if you don't have a White House press corps now that's completely pacified, completely just, you know, uh, obedient almost to the Biden administration, you have a political party in the Republican Party, if they ever stood by President Trump or stood united against Democrats, as a pretty much an unstoppable political force. And you have Mitt Romney to Ben Sass and Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins. You might say, well, th- th- that shows that there are cracks in the Republican Party. No, he, he still has 80 to, 80 to 90% support among the GOP. Kevin McCarthy knows this. All, all the Republicans that are going to be primaried and win their primaries for 2022 are going to be Trump Republicans. They might, they might be more diplomatic. President Trump, the best thing to ever happen, the best thing to ever happen to President Trump, the best thing is that is Twitter banning him. It's the best thing. There are things that he shouldn't have said. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have insulted LeBron James or NFL athletes. He shouldn't have done that. And there were, you know, he got into the presidency utilizing Twitter. And unfortunately, it was, it was part of the undoing, along with message boards. Very, you know, I called out the dangerous, absurd Q nonsense two years ago. I to- also told you to get off Twitter, delete your Twitter account, delete your Facebook account. If, you know, for friends and family that you want to keep in touch with, you know, get their phone number, get their email address, you know, call them, visit them. Um... You don't need to be in a cyber reality. But here, I mean, it's really interesting. You got to think about American politics. American political discourse runs through the lenses and the viewpoints and the biases of oftentimes apoplectic, hysterical, fanatical liberals who are a lot of the time atheists, but their religion is politics. That their religion is politics. Yeah, you have atheists who pride themselves on not believing in God because, I mean, where's the proof? Where's the evidence? I only deal with evidence. Oh, do you think Trump worked with Russia? Yeah, James Clapper said so. Oh, okay. <laughs> These people, they don't, they're not intelligent enough or they're not, they don't possess enough wisdom to realize how duplicitous they are oftentimes. So, Trump never worked with Russia. But see, you had a, you had Jeff Sessions and the people at the other side of that keyboard telling you to trust Sessions, they did so for a reason. Okay, and I called that out two years ago. They did so for a reason. To split the Republican Party or to carve it up. 
You had Jeff Sessions, you had Paul Ryan. President Trump didn't have, like they say, okay, look, technically he had the House and the Senate for two years. He really didn't. They tried to keep Trump at bay because they saw him at, as this um, nightmare. They saw, pre, Republicans saw Trump as the same type of nightmare that Democrats did. But they derived, they tried to leech and derive and extract every ounce of political utility from President Trump and jettison the president when they didn't need him anymore. So you don't have, you never had investigations for anything that Trump leveled against Democrats. We can go into that, but we can't. It's forbidden to speak about. But you, th there's, there should have been investigations or a call for investigations. Okay. Even the notion of investigating Biden, speaking to a foreign uh, leader about the possibility of investigating criminal wrongdoing, which potentially took place. See, when you, the fact checkers are oftentimes, I shouldn't say always, but oftentimes completely off in fact checking Trump or his claims. What they'll say is Trump accused Biden of, uh, you know, withholding a billion dollars. The facts. Well, it's, you know, it's been reported. And, you know, people close to the matter say experts have, have looked at this. International scholars have looked at this. And then they focus on an opinion. Well, we spoke to the, we, we spoke to uh, this public official, and he was even a Republican. He said different. That's not a fact check. That's an ongoing, that's a rebuttal within an ongoing argument or discussion that they call a fact check. You cannot, there is no fact check to say that Biden uh, didn't, didn't engage in wrongdoing. It was suspicious. He engaged in conflicts of interest. This is, a, this is a conflict of interest to be the point man on Ukraine and have your son on the board of directors of a corrupt energy company in that country. It's, it's a conflict of interest. Case closed. That is obvious. If the tables were turned, oh my God, you'd never hear the end of it. Democrats would demand and they would ask and they would buy dossiers and they, they purchased a dossier to create Trump Russia. But when you fact check Trump's claims, oftentimes what they do or any claim that might help Trump, they get the opinion of somebody who disagrees with Trump. <laughs> or a never-Trump Republican. They say, you see? Come on. That's not a fact check. That is, simply, that is simply bolstering or issuing a rebuttal in an ongoing discussion that does nothing to mitigate or erase a sentiment called suspicion. <laughs> see, Trump has been suspicious of Democrats, and for good reason. Clinton used private servers to hide information. She happened to put top-secret intelligence on there. That's illegal, against the law. Because Just because Comey didn't find intent, that doesn't mean it's not against the law. He covered it up. But see, again, Democrats will hide behind government officials that work for them or that help their cause, and then scrutinize and condemn government officials that they don't like. The same Democratic Party that worshipped corrupt intelligence officials, like one Democrat said, Peter Strzok deserved a purple, purple heart. I mean, these, these the Democrats are like completely, many of them completely lost it. The same, the same political party that, that, that worshipped these intelligence officials condemned the White House every single day and accused the White House and, every, and, and the presidency and everyone around Trump of working with Russia with uh, baseless claims, baseless allegations. And then when you say, well, it's not baseless, the intelligence community said so. That's a baseless claim. They could be lying or they could be wrong like they usually, usually are from the Bay of Pigs, Gulf of Tonkin, Facebook ad, WMD, Facebook ads. We, we just... So my point what I'm trying to tell you is without late night talk show, constant, like, they, they don't run on, Democrats don't run on policies. They run on groupthink. But the groupthink isn't even enough. You can put the, the talk shows and um, the late night, you know, the corrupt intelligence officials, Washington Post, New York Times, MSNBC, CNN, at the end of the day, they're not passing Medicare for all. They're just opposing President Trump and they want incremental changes that the left isn't happy about. Like, for example, Jimmy Dore is a hero. I'm sure he disagrees with me on a lot of things, a great many things. I think that he's fantastic. 
Now, some people might say, oh, A.J. Goodman, uh, you like Trump, so therefore, and it's like, President Trump is presided over fantastic achievements in terms of foreign policy and other issues. We had record low unemployment throughout most of his uh, presidency. First, only president to sign an executive order combating anti-Semitism on college campuses, which is running rampant. Um, Jimmy Dore, what he did is he said, well, I, you know, you have that. Democrats have the presidency, the House and the Senate. Can we have Medicare for all? And the pushback, the vitriol, the venom from the left, I mean... The, the whole system now is imploding. So what did Jimmy Dore do wrong? What's, what is, what's wrong with force to vote? What is wrong with that? Oh, it gets Democrats on. It, it, it divides Democrats. There, there's, no, there's no unity among Democrats. It's just without every single factor, without every single possible advantage from late night to corrupt intelligence officials, they don't have a political party. They run on groupthink. That's why you have mindless people like friends calling out, I just want to let you know, I'm very upset with you. Why? You never cared about politics before. <laughs> How many people do you know in your life who never cared about, who never talked politics, and suddenly they don't want to talk to you because, of, because you support Trump? They're like mindless zombies who, who are doing you a favor. If, 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 if a friend goes to you and says, I don't want to be your friend anymore because of Trump, God, I mean, imagine... If it just took politics, if, if they put politics above friendship, what kind of human being is that? I put friendship above politics. I put family and friendship above politics. A person can come to me that I care about and say, you know what, I disagree with you on everything politically. I'd be like, okay, fine. Politics does not define me as a human being. Politics defines Democrats as human beings. It defines them, the political party, sorry, defines them. The policies don't. They can go out there, you see what Trump did? Yeah, oh, President Obama did worse. <laughs> Here's, here are the, that's not worse, it's different. It's, anyway, give me your thoughts below. Trump has the keys to the Republican Party. He really does. He has the keys to the Republican Party, and he'll have the keys for a very, very long time, thank God. Um, you need an opposition political party, an opposition viewpoint. What, what they need to do also is they need to get like... Uh, they need to elevate conservative media or, like, elevate conservative or journalists who support Trump. I don't even know if they're, like, in the Wall Street Journal. I'm thinking, like, are there any in the Wall Street Journal? Like, you need to, like, President Trump needs to, either, whether it's the New York Post or, or whatever, they, they, he needs to elevate and amplify and, and do the same thing liberals have done with the Washington Post and New York Times with either the New York Post or possibly the Wall Street Journal or something, because that has to, like, you can't roll into the next, well, 2022 Republicans will control the House and instant impeachment because of Biden, uh, Biden's son Caligula and Biden's role in lying about everything. But there needs to be some, it, it, it's not just, can't, Trump can't just create his own media uh, conglomerate, which he could, which would, be, would be, which would be fantastic. There needs to be one of the mainstream publications that support President Trump in the manner the Washington Post and New York Times supports Democrats. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe right this second. Trump holds the keys to the future of the GOP. Thank you.